OGCI has announced its upstream carbon intensity target for 2025, consistent with support for the goals of the Paris Agreement. Jerome Schmidt, chairman of the executive committee, explains why the target is an important milestone for OGCI and what member companies are doing to reduce carbon emissions. It is a very important milestone for OGCI and I believe for the industry to set and announce this target. Because, first of all, it is a practical one. It is near term. It is a 2025 target, not a 2050 or 2100. Secondly, because it is meaningful. It is uh, pushing us to improve and reduce the collective emissions of the OGCI member companies by minus 9 to minus 13 percent to support the Paris Agreement aims. So this target is important. In addition, this target is covering about 30 percent of the oil and gas industries with companies coming from everywhere in the world, whether it is from China, from the Middle East, from South America, from Europe, or from the US. To this extent, this target is very important. When you look at the numbers, what are we talking about? We are talking about real numbers as well. We are talking about reducing emissions in the order of magnitude of 36 to more than 50 million tons of CO2 equivalent per year from 2025 onwards, which represents uh, the consumption of about four to six million households. So this is very significant. There is no silver bullet. We will need to work in all directions in order to achieve this target. Not only we electrify more and more our operations with renewables, solar and wind in particular, to keep increasing continuously the energy efficiency of our production assets. Obviously, to reduce our flaring in order to be at the meeting point in 2030 for zero routine flaring. And finally, last but not least, methane, methane reduction is already key, more and more at the center of our efforts, because methane reduction is a quick win in the climate battle. So we will report on our progress annually, and the results will be verified by an independent third party. We believe this is very important. Reporting, transparency, verification, third party. The methodology will be available on our website and we will make sure that what we do can be challenged by our stakeholders so as they understand and they keep helping us to improve. In addition, the fact that the methodology is consistent across the board will help us to challenge ourselves, ourselves internally inside the GCI and keep emulating each other to progress further. So this target will, at the end of the day, be also a mean to go beyond each of our member companies' existing boundaries. When we worked on this target, we asked ourselves, should we do it on an absolute basis or should we refer to an intensity-based target? And some of our stakeholders were asking us to work on the basis of an absolute target. And some of us told us that our role was not only to keep improving and emulating each other, but as well to stimulate 
the oil industry to improve. Hence the fact that we decided to use a carbon intensity reduction target, which means reducing emissions on a per unit of energy produced. At the end of the day, it's very easy to translate that from an intensity-based target to an absolute number if you know what is being produced. But having an intensity-based target helps us to challenge each other in order to improve, to be the best. It creates a race. And it enables as well third parties, whether these are other oil and gas companies, not member of a GCI, or NGOs, or governments, to refer to it in order to improve or push their own stakeholders to improve. So we have a carbon intensity reduction target. We will work on that basis. It is practical, it is meaningful, and at the end, it provides real emission reductions.